Dang. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. I need to do this different. Shoot. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna be dark for a second, but I'm gonna still be here. But okay, that's fine. I'm on my my phone, so I'll switch over to my computer. Um, in a second. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hi, Miss Baldwin. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I was gonna say, Sean, you're in the theater. <laughs> yeah, that was a headshot I did um, last year. Oh, okay. It's like an amphitheater type space. Cool. So, Miss Baldwin, we're just giving our other. Um, guests a moment to join and commissioner is also connecting yeah, no problem. everybody is able to connect successfully before we actually go live All right, good people. Good evening. Let me redirect the notice. You want it? Oh, man. We have Miss Baldwin on so far from Gresham Hills. The Hills. Hey, Commissioner. <laughs> the Hills. The Hills. <laughs> How are you? Good, how are you doing tonight? I'm rolling a little sad, but I'm rolling. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, send me their bios and all of that. 
they're celebrities tonight. Well, well, it was a little fluid as far as attendance commissioner, so you'll see when you get it, we'll um, do it a little differently, just allowing them to introduce, because some were switching at the last. Oh, okay. Okay. The attendees, so it was. All right. Hi, Miss Murphy. She's on mute. You're on mute. Okay, sorry. Hello. Miss Murphy. Oh, man. I'm old. Oh, I'm with the celebrity tonight, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're with the celebrity. Let's put it that way. Y'all got, got me fried up tonight. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. Hey, I would please send me that new uh, census uh, pamphlet. I love that one that I saw today. Which one, Commissioner? The blue one. They got y'all got a new blue one. Y'all putting out. I saw today when I was over at the COVID testing site. The new census. Uh, these y'all big words, y'all collateral. <laughs> I'll have to get that image because that was one that just went to print the other last week. So let me see if I get that image. Yeah, it don't have to be tonight, but you know. Okay. I'm fine. I still got a couple of hundred left for these. I'm hopefully I can get them out. I want to get them old ones out the way because we got that. Um, we're going to do 2,400 families on Saturday food. Mm -hmm. So and the thousand on Friday. You know, yeah, East Lake. East Lake doing a thousand family so that's going to be something if you have that information we can put that up on if um michonne could send us that we could put it up on our website for everybody okay. mm -hmm. and did you, do you have the covid testing too information um, send all yeah send all of it to us we'll put all of yeah. it up there for for you oh, yeah. for everybody here yeah they can do the swab or the nasal test, so it's not all nasals to do swab too. Okay. Well, thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Y'all, y'all, y'all believe the president on that, but y'all don't believe him on nothing else. Yeah. Oh, he was hurt. <laughs> y'all believe him, said we're gonna hurt you. Now I don't I don't I don't want to use the word believe with him in any sentence. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. You can't put them two words together with him and I. I'm sorry, Michelle. <laughs> All right, we are we are um as far as the live stream is going, no problem this this time. Everything's perfect. Wonderful. So we're still waiting for one more. Yeah, we take our time. We want to give people the chance to come in instead of just starting right away. So let's give them a few minutes okay. and we'll get started. I'm learning that from other people to give you a chance to get in there and then you can start talking. <sighs> it's, just like, it's just like any physical meeting. People are late. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, right. And now they're getting zoomed, zoomed out now. So they, but now, <laughs> not meaning, I think you got all your time every meeting. I, I, I had a five hour meeting last, yes, last oh, Tuesday. Oh, gosh. On Zoom. Thursday, yes. Oh, um, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I had to bring out my airport, that thing you put on your neck at the airport. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And you can't stand up because everybody watching everything you do. I said, man, I can't keep sitting here. <laughs> Especially if you have on shorts. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I got this nice picture up. <laughs> yeah. Town one. Very serious one, Sean, on the other. You have two pictures up. I don't know if you're aware of that. 
Oh, I'm next level. I got two pictures on y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be like that. You're gonna be like that. A uh, tenth grade that faked a teacher out. Oh, she was in class. She was outside playing. <laughs> <laughs> and the pictures of like she was in class all day. They, they, she tricked. Her. She had the teacher thinking she was watching her the whole time. That's I a said, cute kid boy. Yeah. And now y'all know my secrets. Yeah, I got it, LaShawn. Okay, all right. And Ms. Baldwin, the other one should be in your queue, the flyers. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, and, I, and I'm gonna let y'all do a little intro as we get started, because I really want people uh, to understand the type of leaders we have leading organizations and how unique you all are in this special time. It's uh, a time where leadership is so needed and um, what you all do as HOA is more than just hold a meeting. You, you're trying to hold a community together in this crisis and uh, so it, we'll talk about that but the goal is for me to reverse it where y'all always ask me questions. I'm asking y'all questions tonight. Okay. <laughs> Best practices and promising approaches. And we need the, uh, did the Kirkwood K and O person come in yet? I see Katie Kiesel, Kissel. Yes, that's me. I am sorry, I'm having a few technical difficulties. Oh, and to do that listen, I'm gonna go Thank for a look. Look, I'm just tell you, there you are. There you no are. judgment about this mess. I, I, right I, now, I, we're I all in quarantine. I thought you were doing those Liberty Mutual commercials where you're going to be in the dark and they throw the light on you right out of there. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's, it's bad. It's just, it's got that, got that curly hair. And it's that's, just, why, that's why you're on tonight, because I want the real people. <laughs> The real presidents of HOA's reality show. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible and awesome at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean, are we ready? One, one more minute. Okay. Uh, no, and apologies. Yeah, and not, in addition to the technical difficulties, uh, we were watching the uh, some live feeds of the protests in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And my five-year-old was asking some very tough questions. So mm -hmm. we had, we were in the midst of explaining, yes. explaining yes. things, and you know. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right, we're ready. All, All right. right. So. Oh, you have t um, about 10 seconds, but just act like you're live right now. All right. And just count it down. Katie, I'm gonna give you one second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one second. No, it's all good. No, 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 no. It's bad, it's bad. No, it, it's okay. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm ready. Boom, okay. And you should see my pajamas. <laughs> And we're live. All right. Good evening, my Touchpoint family. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to our Touchpoint series that we started. This is our ninth episode, and it's all about how District 3 can keep connected to our community by with education, uh, empowerment, linking leverage, and empowering. I'm Commissioner Larry Johnson. We have a very, very good topic tonight. But before we start, I all want to start off with uh, what's going on uh, in our nation, in our state, in our county, in our city. And uh, my, he my heart is heavy because of, of what we're dealing with, with George, Mr. Floyd, Arbery, Breonna Taylor, uh, our nation. We, we want to stand with those families. Our prayers go out and we cannot stand by and let this type of um, 
racism and systemic issues continue to happen in our country. Uh, as an African-American male, uh, growing up on the south side of Chicago, I can tell you from experience about uh, police brutality and, and just being scared of the police growing up and things that happened to us. And now I'm on the other side in terms of a county commissioner. Now I get to see the whole, the whole picture. Not all the officers are, are bad. They want to protect our communities. But we do have some cultural things that we have to address in our country. And so I want to make sure that we stand with them. And I always have flashbacks to 1991 when I was in college when Rodney King happened. And I was just scared. And I was staying in Colorado at the time. And at that time was only about 14 African-Americans uh, in the, um, the whole town. And it was an opportunity for us to connect and, and just know what was going on. And so uh, we have to embrace and understand what's going on as it relates to change. But some things that we have to address for us to move forward in, as, in the future. And so I want to make sure as a country, as a county, uh, that we stand up and say that we are not going to tolerate uh, those things from happening here in our community. So. I thank uh, you all. Let's keep everybody in our prayers. The peaceful protesters uh, are out and want to keep them going forward as we move forward as well uh, and keep our families in prayer and this community in prayer as we move forward. So thank you all, Touchpoint family, District 3 family. Let's continue uh, to light the torch of collaborations, uh, light the torch of peace, like the torch of working together. And what you're gonna to see tonight uh, is some highlights from some key leaders in uh, some our HR uh, homeowners associations who are gonna give us some light, who are gonna give us some empowerment, gonna give us some, some nuggets on, on our communities and how they're working in their communities to make sure people are safe and people are moving forward. So before I start that, I wanna make sure that you understand we do have the census Please, the census is here. Uh, we need you to fill it out. The Cab County is now at 60% of response. Uh, we're trying to move forward. My goal is to try to do at least 10, 15% every month. We only had 72% return rate in 2010, and I'm the chair for the census. And you know, 99 and a half won't do for me. I want 100% return rate, and we can do this. Uh, just recently, if you look at what's going on with COVID-19, the shortage of hospital beds, ventilators, those things are based on your population. That's how you count how many hospital beds you need to have. That's how you look at the rate of transmission of diseases. It's all done by population count in your census. So please, you all, 10 minutes, 10 questions. Let's fill this out. Let's continue to be strong and make a difference in our communities because the census is where it is and what we need to do because this will help us next 10 years because we're gonna have a post-COVID effect from mental health to domestic violence to seniors that need food to our young people who need uh, summer jobs. All of those things are impact. I mean, we just closed out our summer jobs. We had 850 summer jobs and we had over 7,000 applicants for 850 jobs. And remember, we, see, we received money based on our population from the Senate CARES Act. We got over $125 million in the cap. But just imagine if we would have got that $275 million that we left on the table because we only had a 72% return rate. So please, 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 if you under the sound of my voice, uh, area codes 321634, we need for you to pick it up, especially along the I-20 corridor, along the apartment communities. And we'll be doing more over there. We're, doing a, we're going to do a movie night uh, close to some of the apartments over there. We're doing an ice cream social coming up with Dairy Queen. We're going to go to all the extended state hotels to get them more galvanized around uh, census as well as testing for COVID. But please fill this out. Thank you. The other part is, of course, I hope you, hope you sent yours in. Your absentee ballot uh, voting. is Early voting is going on right now. You can vote at the Gallery of South DeKalb Mall. There's other sites that we posted on our email list. And of course, uh, you can vote on June 9th. That's the actual day that we can vote in the presidential primary, as well as all of the elected offices that may be up 
this term from sheriff to state representative to state senator, county commissioner. Uh, it's just a whole host of judges are up. So please, you all, exercise uh, your de democratic right by making sure that you vote. It's very important to have people in office uh, who represent you and can share your policy views as you move forward. So thank you for that. I want to share those um, thoughts tonight as your county commissioner. You know, I care about you. I love you so much. I want to make sure that you are, are doing everything you can uh, to make a difference in our community. But now I'm joined by three exciting leaders uh, from three very uh, progressive, I think, uh, HOAs who are always uh, are moving and doing great things. I'm joined by Churchill Downs, President uh, of Gresham Hills and Kirkwood Neighborhood Associations. And I want them to share in their own way. Let's tell us a little bit about you, because see, I get, I'm on the side now where I get to ask questions. I normally go to their meetings, I sit up at the front, and I get all these questions thrown at me. Now it's my turn tonight. And so I'm so happy to be joined. And so we'll start off with our president of Churchill Downs. Introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you. My name is Edwin Ed Murphy. I am the president of Churchill Downs. We're located between Wesley Chapel, Wesley Chapel and I would say Candler Road, right in the middle of that right off Rainbow Drive. We have approximately 300, uh, between 300, 330 homes. Uh, we're a great community. Uh, I would dare to tell you we're hidden secret. We're right there uh, to the left side, of, to the right side of us, we have Summergate Park. So that's to give you an idea of where we're located. We're a very active community. Um, we have really been instrumental in building up our community because we believe that's so important. We're reminded of what Coretta Scott King said, which is that the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassion actions of its members. So, you know, we stay busy building our community and I think that's what's so important right now. You see uh, all that's going around you that we're facing as a nation well, quite frankly, there is a community that we all belong to that we're responsible for building up and making sure it uh, is successful. We meet every month. There are some months in the course of a year where we do not meet because we meet every fourth Monday. And sometimes fourth Monday counteracts with a holiday, things of that nature. So there are some months that we do not meet. Uh, but we meet every month and we're very much involved in uh, community efforts, whatever they are, uh, and to close out, we are a voting community. Uh, we tell people, if you make it to a Churchill Downs Civic Association meeting, you're likely going to be elected to the office you're running for. If you don't make it to us to share what your vision is for uh, our community, then very likely you're not going to hear from us at the voting polls. So we're very active. Um, we try to be very community oriented in that we believe that, you know, every one voice counts. And so whether it's a elderly person, because we have a very large elderly community, uh, to a young person uh, in high school or elementary school, we believe that their voice needs to be heard because it's what makes your community complete. Mm. So we're very proud of Churchill Downs and I've been the president a while now, um, have actually forgotten the amount of years. Uh, <laughs> so, take my word for it, I've tried to do some other things differently, but um, hell hostage, let's put it that way. But I, I do it joyfully, don't get me wrong, we're composed of a great body of people that works throughout the community. We're, we have what we call block captains, and our block captains work uh, strategically for their street to make sure information like what we're doing today gets out to all the community members so everyone can be a part of this wonderful meeting that we're having this evening. Thank you, thank you. Now we'll go to Gresham Hills Association. Hey, Gresham Hills. 
Hi there. Um, so my name is Noelle and I am the vice president of the Gresham Hills Neighbors Association. Um, we are still a very young organization. We started about five years ago. And when we first started, it was a much, we represent, so basically we represent the area of Gresham Park. Um, but when we first started, we were a much smaller area within Gresham Park because it was only myself and another neighbor. It was just two of us. Um, but since we have grown and have um, taken on um, leadership from outside of just the original area, so now we're the entire area of Gresham Park, and that is about two miles south of East Atlanta Village, and it's bordered by um, Boulder Crest and uh, Gresham Road. Um, so we, um, we meet every other month. Um, and we, during this time, have only been meeting during our Zoom calls, um, so we have not been able to have our in-person um, meetings like we normally do, but we, we started mainly as an organization um, trying to reach out to the seniors in our area because there's a lot, also a very large senior um, um, community in Gresham Park. Um, and we just felt like there was a lot of need for communicating things with the seniors um, because they are not on Facebook. Um, they're not on social media. So, you know, how can we get the word out and, and get them, you know, involved? Um, and so we literally just started posting flyers on taping flyers to mailboxes. That's how we got the word out for people. Um, we're still, you know, we're still trying to build up our membership. So we're working on that. Um, and as far as like community engagement, because I know that's like the main like theme for tonight's meeting. Um, so we, in terms of, so we have like, we try to use all um, social media platforms for reaching out, but we also do um, robocalls. So we have like a robocall service because we know a lot of seniors have like landlines and stuff like that. So we try to like send out messages through our robocall system. We do text messages, we do email, we do Facebook, mm -hmm. we do next door. Um, if we have to do, we still do flyers on the mailboxes. Like those are all ways that we try to stay engaged in like outreach to our members. Um, so in terms of like some things that we've been doing during the, the COVID times, um, we have been communicating with our senior members and offering things like delivery and grocery pickup for our seniors just to make sure that they're you know being able to be cared for um, we have had a couple seniors that have used this service regularly now so um, so that's very helpful and we you know we want to be able to stay in touch with those seniors and know that you know if they need us that we're there for them um, we also um, we try to, let's see, I wrote some notes down here. So we always have our elected officials, officials come out, like um, Commissioner Larry Johnson has come out to many of our meetings. We're very thankful. Um, and we like, uh, we always have uh, B. Wynn. She's been out at most of our meetings. She was at our, I just got off our Zoom call before I joined this one. Um, and she has been giving us COVID-19 updates regularly. Um, so she tells us um, testing information. Um, she let us know that tonight, um, let's see, what were my, my notes from tonight? She gave us information. Um, she, oh, she said that everybody should get tested no matter what. Um, she wants people to continue to wear their masks and, you know, to shelter in place, um, things like that. So we try to have our officials come out so that they can provide that information to our seniors um, and our other members. Um, we've had great support from our elected officials. Um, we continue to connect with our members. Um, we try to connect resources with our members right now. So we've got the food, the free food commune, Chris 180, Food Not Bombs. Um, we're working with all of those organizations <clears throat> to help connect our members with food options. Um, and so let's see. So yeah, that's kind of just how we're we're still, like I said, we're still a young organization, so we're still just trying. Um, we've been pushing things for the census as well. Um, we try to put stuff up on our website, like just recently we put up the advanced voting locations for um, for our members, so that members, so that they know where they can go to vote early. Um, and yeah, um, that's about it, really. We're, you know, we're just. Wow. Well, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> You still crawling. You ain't stopped walking yet. So <laughs> um, I can't take credit for all of this. We have an awesome president who just uh, came on board this year. His name is Emmanuel Lewis. He's doing great things. He's been awesome. We're really thankful to have him. And of course, we've got, you know, uh, our treasurer and our corresponding secretary and 
they're all doing hard work for us and it's just um great yeah. so, we appreciate that yeah. thank you thank you thank you now we'll turn to kirkwood neighborhood association known as kno Come it's on kirkwood in, neighbors organization we're gonna That's have right. to, um people get touchy about that one uh but yeah so my name is katie kissel I've lived in Atlanta since 2012, been in Kirkwood, in our home in Kirkwood since 2013. Um, before I was the president of this organization, I stepped into this role in January. Uh, I was the public safety liaison for several years and the marketing chair for our Kirkwood Spring Fling for a couple years as well. So my husband and I, and we have two small children. We are big fans of Kirkwood. Uh, it's become our, our home is the place that we want to stay. We want to live forever and, you know, hopefully see our grandkids someday, um, here in Kirkwood. And, um, we, uh, you know, it, we're in a little bit of an interesting situation. Uh, we are in the city of Atlanta, DeKalb County. We are part of NPUO. So we respond, we have both a city of Atlanta uh, council member who we work with, uh, Natalyn Archibong, as well as our, our district uh, commissioner, Larry Johnson, and on the DeKalb County side. And there's a lot of complications that kind of come with that. Larry and I have had a, a few different conversations. I've had a few different conversations with his office uh, regarding some of the issues with 911 mm -hmm. that we've experienced in our area. And I'm sure it's something that a lot of people are experiencing across the nation with cell phone towers and and, and right there on the district line and who, who goes where. So, you know, it, it, it's it's something that we we offer, but as far as the community outreach, there's just so much. I mean, it, we are such a, we have such a, a long history and, and the organization as a whole has just continued to grow. And just this year, I've added three new committees um, to our organization. So to start out, a, a big part of what we do is we see all the zoning that comes in. While in the city of Atlanta, um, MPUs are really kind of the official method. If there is a neighborhood organization or association, the MPUs typically defer to their votes. So any type of zoning variances that come through. So that's one of our, our committees and one of our main things that we, we do. We also have, a um, organization called Kirkwood Cares, which is a committee of KNO, where we help um, elderly low income seniors stay in their home by making necessary repairs. I mean, a lot of times we have taxes that are going up extremely. I mean, in, in urban areas, we are constantly seeing the effects of gentrification and uh, rising house prices and just the, the rapid changing of the neighborhood as a whole. And we are trying to fight the displacement of mm -hmm. our seniors who want to stay in our community. They are gems and we value them. And to add to that, uh, you know, I mean, and we spend, I think our budget this year for Kirkwood Cares is about $60,000. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's that's what we have right now it, it could it could grow before you know with fundraising um towards the end of the year unfortunately we had to cancel our spring fling which is a big committee for us and a huge fundraiser it is our main fundraiser as an organization luckily for the past several years we built up our um, bank enough that we're able to support all of our needs throughout the year without bringing in any income from the spring fling so we're we're very excited, you know, to still be moving forward and to be in that position. Um, the next organization I want to talk about is a new organization, and uh, it was kind of brought on by this COVID-19 crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, Noelle had kind of touched on a similar organization in, in her community, which is our Kirkwood Adopt-A-Senior program. This program we intend to continue after COVID-19, but for now we have a one-to-one -one senior 
to volunteer ratio. Um, and then we have additional volunteers beyond that handling logistics of getting groceries to neighbors. I believe right now we have somewhere in the vicinity of 25 to 30 neighbors, uh, senior neighbors who we are servicing on a weekly basis, making sure they get their groceries. Are they getting to their doctor's appointments? Do they, you know, are they getting their medicines? Are they getting, um, are they just being checked in on? You know, I mean, we yeah. all have a lot of us yeah. have small children, you know, I mean, and it's, it's lonely. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be lonely for a senior in regular times, but especially now, you know, maybe their family um, has to work as an essential employee and don't feel safe coming in and seeing mm. them. So, you know, we're just, we're trying to do everything we can to support those, those seniors. Uh, another committee of ours is our parks and recreation committee which really services there's so much green space in our area um, and we spend quite a bit of money and uh, it's probably outside of Kirkwood Cares and before KSP now we have the adopt a senior program where we spend quite a bit of funds but before that the parks uh, committee was the one where we were spending the second most amount of money and improving our parks we're getting volunteer days. Of course, we've had to do several social distancing um, volunteer days uh, during this time, but we've revitalized many parks and created new green spaces in our area. There's a area wow. called Kirkwood Urban Forest that was basically completely pulled together by the community. There's these areas in the city where because of the stream buffer and because of different reasons, they're not buildable areas. So they're just neglected and completely overrun by invasives. And, and we try to adopt those areas and, and bring them into the mix so they're taken care of and, and become usable space for the community. Wow. So, um, and then of course, we have our arts and beautification committee, uh, which has been reinvigorated this year, um, just, in trying to improve our our community as a whole through art and uh, we have some really awesome um, new and exciting ideas coming out of that using our our Kirkwood K which is a signature thing for us and something you know we hold very dear, near and dear to our heart and kind of putting that throughout our neighborhood uh, and finally, we have the, the newest committee, which is the Community Outreach Committee. This was a committee that originally back in KO's organization had been um, a part of a part of the organization. Uh, and now we have kind of brought that back. And the purpose of this committee is, I'm going to be completely honest, something that we struggle with is... Um, mm -hmm. Our community has not always been a safe place for black voices. Um, they, they, they don't, it, it doesn't matter what we say or do, but if, if black people do not feel safe in, in having their voices heard in our community, that's a problem and that's a problem that white people and and our whole community as a whole need to step up and and try to resolve and so the community outreach our main goal we're working on an action plan as we to correct that and and to do everything we can to to create a, a safer and and more welcoming environment to mm -hmm. our black neighbors especially you know considering the history of kirkwood and how it went from a predominantly white neighborhood to a predominantly black neighborhood and now is experiencing this transition of gentrification in in a very rapid way mm. so um you know it it's hard work and um it's uncomfortable and white people don't like to be uncomfortable uh mm. but we we're trying to sit in it we're trying to we're we're trying to make it happen so wow wow see that's that's why y'all are on tonight I mean, I want the Touchpoint family that you're listening. You've seen these are three dynamic homeowners associations doing great work. And I wanted them to tell their story because it's so important when we're dealing with COVID-19 and shelter in place that we have opportunities where we can show how 
HOAs are empowering, how they are educating, how they are connecting with their neighbors. And you don't see this a lot on TV. We see a lot of the other stuff, but I wanted you to see and hear from um, leaders of these HOAs who can testify and who I know personally are doing great things in their community. And what I'm gonna ask my one question, then I'm gonna open it up to the audience. Tell us as uh, leaders in your com respective communities, how, how are you coping with this? Uh, of course, we're dealing with J the George Floyd situation that's recent, but how are you all are coping? Give some coping techniques to other HOA leaders because everybody comes to you. Everybody, they, they come to you before they go to the police, uh, 911. I call y'all the mini commissioners and connectors because I mean, I got 150,000 people and I could imagine I got, I, I got the whole spectrum, rich, poor, young, black, and I get all types of calls. I get, you know, everybody want me to do this and that, but you all in a smaller group, so everybody get to see you every day. I mean, and so talk to us, how do you cope and deal with the pressures of leadership and uh, doing your job and staying, staying able to maintain your family, uh, your job, because you work, a lot of y'all are full-time, do other stuff full-time. This is not what you do all day. Uh, but but talk to us about how do you do and give us some nuggets on how people can cope in during these times. I can speak on behalf of Churchill Downs, and one of the things we function out of is that you can do a little alone, but you can do so much more together. Mm -hmm. So our biggest uh, challenge is getting people to work together, mm -hmm. and by doing so you can accomplish a lot of things and you cover a greater uh, area of people to help. So right. while each one of us are doing what we have been set or, or positioned to do, there's still a need to come together. So if you ask me, what do we do in Churchill Downs that make us successful, is we work together. Mm -hmm. um, no one problem belongs to any one person. Even if it's someone's home that they're having problems, whatever it is, I must become a resource to help them get to the necessary connections they need to maybe get a problem corrected with their street or their uh, the neighbors. There may be some homes that have been put up for sale and no one has moved in them for years. And, you know, neighbors don't want to see that across on them all the time. Right. So again, I go back for Churchill Downs. We interact a lot. Interaction is important. Uh, and the young lady made a good point. It's, it's really not about the black community or the white community is about working together. And the minute we come to that realization, we, we as a community do very well. We offer a variety of meeting uh, events throughout the year. That brings people together. That uh, also sort of let new neighbors know that, hey, we're alive and well, we're here for you. Uh, so often in days of old, when someone moved in your neighborhood, you went and knocked on their door, you told them who you were, and at that point, you built a relationship and they knew where to go when they need help. That's our reason for having what we call block captains. Right. There's one strategic cone, because I have to get some of this work off of me. <laughs> I hire you. I really do. You've probably been commissioner as long as I've been president of Churchill Downs. <laughs> With that being said, um, you know, you have to make sure people have a strategic place that they can go to and present their problems. So for me, I'm very blessed because now I have these block captains who may contact me for three other people, but I'm just relating to my block captain. So block captains are very important. I uh, give kudos to all of our block captains here at Churchill Downs. They've been block captains on this street for many, many years mm -hmm. and have been faithful to their responsibility. So whatever we do, we work at it together. And I think that's a key component. Even when we face issues in our community of, you know, different type of uh, challenges where businesses are trying to come in, where uh, uh, different uh, ownership wants to uh, do things different now from what they've been doing, you know, recreate themselves. We have to be a part of that 
to make sure that as a community, we're not overlooked. And here's the key to all of that. It makes people feel like they're a part of something. They're just not living in the house located on the corner. They're a part of something. And once people buy into, hey, I'm a part of a community, you will hear our Churchill Down residents tell you where they live. They will proudly say, I live in Churchill Downs. And Churchill Down has a history. It wasn't always a community where African Americans were welcome. But now we live with each other, and that's a host of cultures in our community. We have a vast amount of people. So I want to share that, you know, while you can do a little yourself, together we can do so much more. And so that's how we survive as a community. Thank you for that nugget. All right, our next leader, come on, give us a nugget and how you cope and, and how you're dealing with it so other people can learn from you. Um, I think for Gresham Hills, um, building off of what Ms. Murphy said, um, for us, it, it's also working together. So just knowing that you can reach out to your board members or, you know, we don't have block captains yet. That is a goal for us as well. Um, but if you need help, there are people who you can rely on. Um, mm -hmm. And I think for us, just, um, I think because we're so young, we... We just want, like, we see the other neighborhood associations that have been around for so much longer than us, and we want to be like you guys so badly, and we want to <laughs> get so much done so quickly, but we have to keep in mind, like, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon, so we need to, mm -hmm. you know, keep in our heads, like, this is not something that we're just going to be doing, you know, for a year, like, it doesn't all have to happen right away. We need to, like, pace ourselves and rely on our neighbors and, our, and, and the board members and kind of just, and not burn out, because really, right. it, it can really get overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> I know yes. Commissioner. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Now we heard from connecting, we heard from pacing, and now let us hear from uh, Katie and Noah. Give us some of your, your tips on how you do it. Um, I think the accessibility is a huge part of it, you know, for better, for worse, I put my phone number out there for everyone to see. Um, and I think the biggest part about being accessible is being willing to listen. So, um, you know, and maybe other people don't have this dynamic, but there, there, there's a couple things at play for us in uh, we don't have block captains really anymore, the community used to, but with the way social media has developed and there's really become, there's, there's Kirkwood and then there's online Kirkwood. And God help mm. us. Um, yeah. <laughs> online, online Kirkwood is and Kirkwood aren't always the same things. Um, and you hear from people in one space that you don't hear from the other and vice versa, but there are players who cross both across. Wow. Both. Um, so specifically for us, there is a group that has become organically a group. It, it's not associated with our organization. Um, we, we do very, we're very strict about saying that it is not associated with our organization, um, but it, it is just a collective of neighbors who talk and they share information and sometimes they share feelings or political things or, you know, so it, it's messy. Yeah. Um, but, but the, the silver lining to all that is that you, you get to see some things and if, you don't get involved in the mess, but you just listen and you observe, you can really go and find people. That means you don't get to have an opinion about a lot of things, not publicly anyway. I have my close friends that I get to, you know, rant about with, but I don't get to have an opinion uh, because I don't want to alienate some members of my community who might be, think differently than yeah. I do. Um, and it means that when I see something, I see someone who has a problem, I reach out to them individually and then we have a one-on-one -on -one discussion and we really get to the root of that issue. And at the end of the day, they're like, okay, this is someone I can trust. This is someone who I can come to with my problems. This is someone, you know, I, this, is, this is okay. And that's where the trust begins. And it's really hard because our, our neighborhood is large. I mean, it, it is physically large and it is also has a lot of people. And so uh, we're, 
we're dealing with um, and, and a lot of new new neighbors. We are dealing with a ton of turnover um, in our neighborhood. And so for that reason, you know, it's, it's constantly having to develop these new relationships to develop these new people and say, yeah, come and join me because I need help. Please, please, like if, if we all do just like what Miss Murphy said, if we all do a little, yes. it, it, it could go so much farther than just one person doing everything. And, and so that's the thing. The other thing during specific to COVID-19 that we've done is we have done the Zoom calls. So we meet um, at the 10th, on the 10th of every month, regardless of what day, what holiday, it, fe it, felt on, it fell on Mother's Day. Uh, in May, and we met on Mother's Day, you know, but we met since the COVID-19 um, pandemic, we have met um, on Zoom. We have done so in uh, April, May, and June. We will most likely be going that way or some hybrid form in July. Um, but we, we, we have no room for really a cancellation of a meeting in our bylaws. So, so we, we, keep, we keep going with that. Wow. And see, that, that's touch point. I wanted you to see how diverse District 3 is. You got a taste of it tonight. You, you've seen uh, three dynamic leaders and how, what they're doing to connect neighbors. It's all about building community. And I believe in capacity building, building community from the inside out. We have to work within our communities to help our seniors, our young people to deal with racial reconciliation. You got young organizations like Gresham Hills who are just starting. You got Churchill Downs has been here. KNO, Kirkwood Neighborhood Association has been around. And I've observed a lot of things. I attend the Spring Fling. I've, I've had other groups model after them around uh, their festivals. Uh, the Kirkwood Cares program, I've been there. I've been a part of that. And I looked at East Lake program and what they're doing. I've highlighted them at our neighborhood associations. This is a group of HOAs that are showing how we care, how we're connected. And that would make, that's what makes District 3 so unique because I can go anywhere in the district from Moreland and Caroline Street and where my district starts over in Edgewood and go all the way down Moreland to the county line of Clayton County and I'm in Ellenwood and come all the way back to Candler Road, Columbia Drive, up to Covington Highway and you can see they're diverse and how much we have to cover uh, within our area. But it's so fun because I, I get, every day is a different day. And so I wanted you all to touch. I wanted you to hear from some great leaders. Now, Sean, I wanted to open up to some questions from our audience uh, that may be out there. And I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Craig. Commissioner, <laughs> I think these wonderful um, leaders have answered all of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They, okay. Yeah, they, they, they've covered them as, as they came in already. Oh, good, good. Well, I wanted you all to do a closing uh, statement. Uh, each uh, HOA, give us some words of wisdom and hope that you can lead our nation, our state, and our county uh, where we deal with COVID and what we're doing with the, uh, the protesting that we have. So uh, give us a few minutes and just give the words of hope that you want to leave our District 3 family with tonight. Um, since I've been starting, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and continue <laughs> in the uh, rotation. Um, I believe that uh, what we're facing now is uh, a need for change. And there's no power for change greater than a community discovering what it cares about. And when people know you care about them, when our young people know you care about them, uh, when people see how we live and exhibit that we care about them, it's gonna make a difference. Listen, we're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna do things that people may not like. I will never forget, uh, Commissioner Johnson, when you had come into office and uh, there was a young lady, she was trying to start a home business. And that home business was a child care facility. You know, by law, she could have six people there. Well, my community was in an uproar about that. And I will never forget that day you call me and you say, now listen, here is what the circumstances are that you're going to have to function out of. That's law. That's the law. 
and the law will allow her to do that. What you do is get with her and make sure she's successful at doing it. And then it will be, you know, an added addition to your community and not so much let's throw our hands up and complain and, you know, make a major war for it, uh, as opposed to working with her and seeing how we can help her. And she, of course, re received approval to do this in-home care for six children. And, you know, I'm the one that had to go back to my community and tell them that, in fact, it had been approved. But what I learned is that when you want change, you've got to work together and discover what your community cares about and what it's all about. And once you do that, for all of us here tonight, listening as guests as well as the callers uh, on the line, people will come on board with what you're trying to do. And so understanding I had to now tr go to the community and share with them that this particular project was going to go forward. But in sharing with them that we're going to piggyback, we're going to help her, we're going to make sure it's success, it was a success, then somehow or another, everything worked out okay. I mean, she didn't stay for long. She may have been there for two or three, four years. I'm not certain about the time. But eventually, she moved on to do something greater, probably actually bought a, stands, a standing free school uh, to run her daycare. So the in-home was probably just a startup. But I want to say this. When people know you care about them, and that's the key, from our seniors, from our young people, you know, we have to take time out and help build our communities. And we cannot allow what we see via the media, the news, stories, you know, all the things that we hear in the course of a day to move us away from working on behalf of our neighborhoods, our communities, the people in our community to make it a success. So as Churchill Downs, uh, we have a, a, a great community. I mean, we're sought after. A home in our community only stays on the market maybe 30 days. And 15 of those, they're working on trying to get in it. So with that being said, that's the key for any community. Know what your community cares about. Know what's important to your area. You won't be able to do everything. You won't be able to be like the co community over in Buckhead or the community over in Stonecrest. Do you. And when I say that you're working together to build a strong family, um, I know my neighbors. I know who they are to my left, to my right, around the corner as the president. And as long as I've been here, yes, I know quite a few of them. But I would extend to anyone, get started with making sure that you care about your community. Wow, I love it. Thank you for that. Next person, please. Um, okay, so words of wisdom. Let's see if I can do this correctly, um, given everything that's going on. So this would be for um, my white friends. Um, I think it's really important to talk less, um, to listen more, and to really be, uh, to really examine um, things like white privilege and white fragility and to understand that those things are implicit in how we are socialized into our communities. And it's really important as, you know, being somebody who just moved into my community relatively um, not too long ago, you know, there are a lot of seniors, um, black people that have lived here for 40, 50 years. You That's need right. to go out and you need to, to get to know them. This is their community. So it's really important for you to be humble and to try and make those connections. Um, so for me, that's this, all of this that's been happening has been a huge, um, I mean, it's, it's been a huge awakening for, for me and for a lot of people in our community. And it's very important to make those connections and to let them know um, that, you know, this is not, this is not where we're going to end. This is the beginning. We're going to push forward and we're going to make this better for everybody. Wow. That's powerful. Thank you for that. All right, KNO, close us out. I didn't know I was going to church. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, both of you guys, thank you so much. I, I think um, I think Noelle and Miss Murphy both uh, kind of hit the nail on the head 
if I had anything to add to that, it would be, I think uh, it's something I learned from our mayor during all of this. And thank God she's our mayor um, mm -hmm. in the city of Atlanta. Uh, and it's to kind of hold your own. I mean, we can't control what's happening. I mean, we can't really control what's happening in our community, but we can contribute to that. Like that's something that we have power to affect and we need to use that power in the best way possible. So during this crisis, uh, during the, the COVID-19 pandemic, during the, um, these protests uh, and the horrible things that have been happening to um, the Black men and women in our community, the biggest thing that I look at is like, hey, I'm, I'm talking to you. I, I, I can't look at Edgewood or East Lake or East Atlanta or any of the other communities, but this is my community and I take ownership of it. And, mm -hmm. and anybody who lives in my community is my responsibility. Wow. I, I truly, I believe that they are my family. Um, my mm -hmm. husband and I moved here. We're both from close knit, heavily, heavily uh, large Catholic families um, from from the north and we moved to Atlanta we thought it would be one stop on our journey and it's our home and this is our family now this is the mm. people that we've chosen um, and maybe that's more important than our blood family is the people that you choose your where you live um, so so I would say you know take care of your own is is kind of how I would sum that up is your own keep your own close and take care of each other wow good touch point you heard it tonight from three of our dynamic leaders in our community uh we're going to be back next week we're going to give you a little hip-hop flavor next week we got lit night with ed that'll be on he's on 102.5 ed long and he's going to be with us to talk about what's going on in the, in the hip-hop community and, and i've been on his show he had me out about two o'clock at night downtown Atlanta, I'm on the show talking about the census at midnight. And so <laughs> we had fun. But I want to say, remember to stay united. Let's continue to move forward. It's about results we can see together. And I love you all, uh, District 3, and thank you all to our guests that came on tonight. You have really helped to empower and inspire our Touchpoint family. And thank you, District 3, Sean, LaShawn, and Brandon. Who, who started this idea about Touchpoint on how we can stay connected. But remember, uh, fill out your census. The election is June 9th. If you want uh, COVID testing, we're at South DeKalb Mall Monday through Friday. We're trying to do over 5,000 tests. So please come on out from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day. No insurance, insurance. We're not turning anybody away. Uh, we just did one on Friday at Green Forest. We had 305 people participate. You know, Friday was rainy. It was drizzling, but people stayed in the line at least 30 and 40 minutes to get tested. And so my goal is to see us tested. I just talked to uh, uh, Etna and CVS, and I've asked them to put some uh, more testing sites in our district. And I just got word that we're going to get one or two more sites uh, in our area. And I'm working on a food drive and we have everything posted for you. Also on June 14th on Candler Road, Gen Care will be giving away uh, free gro groceries to our seniors. Of course, we have the East Lake food giveaway this Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. They're gonna give over a thousand boxes away. And then on Saturday, our CEO, Michael Thurman and the board, we're gonna be at Buck Godfrey Stadium, Hallford Stadium and New Birth Church. And we're gonna give away a 20 pound box of fresh fruits and vegetables. And, uh, and just bless the people as we move forward. And of course, June 6th is my wedding anniversary. <laughs> I'm celebrating with my wife of 29 years. And Congratulations. Thank you. And so we're going to have fun and still uh, do a service uh, like we did on my birthday on May 22nd. God bless you all. Let's be safe. Let's stay strong. And we can move together. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Nice meeting you, ladies. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. <laughs>